and welcome to this video cast and podcast for subscribers to davidike.com. Well, you wouldn't, um, on the face of it, connect the ludicrous build-up uh, militarily against Russia and the demonization of Russia with what's coming up on Monday, Halloween. But you can, because... We live in a reality that is basically two worlds. There is the world populated, inhabited by the mass of the people. And then there is the world that is lived by those that are seeking to manipulate, control and oppress and suppress those people. And those worlds are just not the same. I don't mean that one group is fantastically wealthy compared with uh, the vast overwhelming majority of the rest. That's two worlds in itself. I'm talking about something uh, deeper. See, we um, are looking at a long planned, as I've been saying for so long, uh, conflict between the West and Russia with China brought in as well. It's been long planned and uh, the pieces are being moved into place more and more obviously. Now imagine the mentality that it takes to coldly plan and manipulate a conflict that will cause fantastic monumental death and destruction if it reached the level that they want. What would you need to do that? You would need a complete inability to feel compassion and to feel empathy with those you are going to kill, maim, and make suffer. And yet, we have at least two precedents for it in World War I and World War II that were both, as my books and others have explained in detail, were both long planned and didn't break out by accident or random chance. And when you look at um, what is happening in the world now in relation to this uh, massive uh, NATO build-up uh, against Russia and this demonization of Russia, and when you see in a, uh, a, an excellent speech this week how uh, there seems to be just one mature world leader around and that's Vladimir Putin who was pointing out the ludicrous nature of what's happening because they have uh, absolutely no desire to invade anyone and there is no evidence that that is the case all we have is rhetoric and um, and well outright lies and propaganda from the leadership of the West so here we have this obvious attempt to trigger a war with all the human and environmental consequences. What kind of mentality could possibly envisage that, let alone plan it and want it and seek to make it happen? Well, that brings us to Halloween. This is, like Christmas, a great example of these two worlds that I'm talking about. To most people, uh, not least in the United States, but wider afield now, Halloween is a bit of fun. It's when uh, kids go around the doors, uh, trick and treating, and uh, they... Uh, 
dress up as ghosts and monsters and you have this apple bobbing and all this other stuff that goes on. And in the United States, it's become uh, the second most profitable festival uh, in the year, second only to Christmas in the amount of money that's generated. But Christmas and Halloween have a much deeper significance, and certainly so, to this hidden hand, this other world of interbreeding bloodlines and their gophers that are manipulating world events and have been doing so for literally um, thousands of years. Christmas, for instance, is really Saturnalia. Saturnalia was a festival in ancient Rome during the Roman Empire in the run-up to what we now call Christmas. They gave uh, each other presents at this time. They decorated trees. They uh, hung um, holly, a, a sacred um, uh, plant tree, to um, Saturn. And Saturn was the great god of Rome, hence Saturnalia. This was a festival to the god Saturn. And like so many um, other pagan festivals, Christianity, when it came along, which of course came out of Rome, they uh, decided that they could uh, get new recruits easier. Uh, well, this is one reason for it. There are others. Um, if they just um, took over the pagan festivals and called them a different name. So eventually Saturnalia became uh, our Christmas and the the, the alleged birth date of uh, Jesus Christ, who uh, is just uh, another uh, symbolic uh, figure uh, in a story that's been told over and over again throughout the ages and uh, endless different cultures, uh, each time just put into a, another historical setting with a, another name for the hero. But to this other world, of these bloodlines and the world of Satanists, which these bloodlines are um, in their inner circle. Uh, Christmas is still Saturnalia. It's still a time of human sacrifice. And uh, so Christmas is a time when the Satanists and these bloodlines do their rituals, including human sacrifice. And then, um, not least the sacrifice of children, by the way. And then we come to uh, Halloween. This is the uh, ancient uh, Kate, uh, Celtic and uh, Druid uh, festival. Druids, of course, the priestly class of the Celts. Uh, and they had uh, a festival on uh, November the 1st called Samhain. And the night before uh, was uh, basically the, the night of the dead. And uh, they engaged once again in human sacrifice on uh, one heck of a scale. And then, of course, Christianity came along. And as with Christmas, it hijacked Samhain and called November the 1st All Saints Day. And the night before became known as uh, All Hallows. I've seen it in some places as All Hallows Eve, which morphed into what we today call Halloween. And Halloween, um, in the days of the Celts, was a great time of human sacrifice. And of course, humanity reached a point where this was no longer acceptable, that you could not openly do these human sacrifices as part of your, your culture. 
But it didn't stop when it became unacceptable to do it in the open. It went underground and has continued ever since in the networks of Satanism and the elite bloodline families who are actually the force in the end behind Satanism. Satanism, where they worship their unseen, malevolent, demonic, quote, gods. And they sacrifice to these gods. And, you know, we have this theme where the ancients used to sacrifice young virgins to the gods. Young virgins is just code, symbolism for children. And Halloween, while kids around, particularly the Western world, are engaging in trick-or-treating and uh, dressing up as ghosts and monsters. While they're doing that and having their fun in that side of Halloween, uh, in the shadows, phenomenal numbers of children are being sacrificed by these crazies, these psychopaths beyond words. And people might say, well, hold on, where do all the children come from? Well, if you perceive the number of children that go missing in the world every year, by the number of missing children's stories you see on the news, then you are massively beyond words missing the plot. Extraordinary numbers of children go missing worldwide every year, never to be seen again, at least officially. Now, not all of those children end up with the Satanists, but a significant number do. And these are where the sacrifices come from. And uh, so often, um, a lot of these children are, are brought up in these cults specifically for sacrifice. And therefore, um, they operate in their own their own bubble outside of mainstream society, often with the connivance of those in authority who connect into these satanic networks. And so a lot of children that are sacrificed uh, have never actually been um, officially registered as existing. They have um, people in these uh, satanic cults, they call uh, breeders, women call breeders who are held in captivity and give birth um, to children who are then sacrificed, babies that are then sacrificed, sometimes um, even fetuses that are aborted and then used in sacrifice. I think I mentioned earlier that there are two worlds in our reality. The one that most people perceive to be how things are. But there's another one that is so horrifically different to that that those in the world of the general population will overwhelmingly say, that's rubbish, that, that's nonsense, that, that, that can't be happening. Because this other world is so dramatically, fundamentally, beyond words, different to the world of the scene in general society, that that chasm of difference is too much for most people to to breach in terms of their perceptions of uh, possibility. And also connected to this um, whole uh, area of child abuse is this whole paedophilia um, horror, which has come to light very much in England in recent years, but of course now that the lid's been put on that, oh my, we, we can't let them know this. Shut it up, shut it up. Um, because um, the same networks are involved in uh, the systematic sexual and violent abuse of children. It's all connected to this same network 
which is why you have so many people in positions of power, politically and otherwise, who are both paedophiles and Satanists. So we have this um, period now coming up on Monday of um, Halloween. And to the Celts and the Druids, this was a time when the, the veil between this world and other worlds, the world of the dead, if you like, thinned and the dead could re-enter this world and people from this world could enter the world of the dead. Now, there's another big um, error that's made in terms of perceptions of how things are. And that is that knowledge can only move forward. That wherever we are at any point in what we call human evolution, it must be at the cutting edge of human knowledge. Not necessarily so. Okay, let's look at ancient Egypt. Now let's look at Egypt today. Uh, the, the very comparison between the two reveals that societies can um, go back in terms of where they are as well as forward and and what is the key to that it's knowledge it's the circulation of knowledge the circulation of understanding now if you can systematically withdraw suppress which is what they've done massively through religion not least christianity if you can withdraw and suppress knowledge so it goes out of general circulation then that society is less knowledgeable less evolved if you like in terms of awareness of reality than it was before and there was knowledge circulating about the nature of reality in these ancient societies like um, like the Celts and, and so many others all over the world that has been uh, withdrawn from human society. It's just starting to come back now. Um, and funnily enough, it's coming back into the form of things like quantum physics in, um, in our way of expressing it. But they knew, without using words like frequency and such like, these ancient societies, certainly the, 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 the key, key people within them that held this knowledge, they knew that this reality was only one of endless realities that shared the same space as this one, uh, like radio and television stations in the analog system share the same space without interfering with each other unless they're really close on the dial. And therefore they knew that interpenetrating this world were other realms, what we would now call bands of frequency, that had very different realities and they perceived them as the world of the dead which is kind of true in the sense that uh, when our consciousness leaves the body it goes to other frequencies of reality um, the body holds our attention in this frequency band we call visible light in the electromagnetic spectrum but when when our consciousness leaves the body then it doesn't have that focus and it expands into other realities so although there is no death apart from the, the body ceases to function uh, you can understand why these ancient societies like the Celts perceived um, these other realms as the realms of the dead and when um, planets and other heavenly bodies are moving around they are impacting upon the energetic field, the energetic sea that we're constantly interacting with, the electromagnetic field. And therefore they affect it. And it's therefore understandable again, from a modern perspective, how uh, certain times, i.e. states of the energetic field, would see it thin out in terms of its um, frequency difference between this reality and other realities. Uh, than, it, than it would be 
uh, normally in other parts of the year. And these Satanists and elite satanic bloodlines understand this too. They just don't want us to understand it. And therefore, um, they can interact with their, quote, gods in other realms of the unseen more powerfully, more easily, um, at, at certain points than they can at others. And this is where these major satanic festivals come from. And Christianity has picked up almost all of them. In fact, um, many churches are actually built on former pagan sites where um, they understood that the world is interpenetrated by energetic lines of force, actually information, which people call ley lines and meridian lines, etc. And where many of these lines cross, um, fantastic uh, energetic vortexes are created, which, which also thin out the... Um, frequency difference between this world and other worlds and if you put something on that spot and you do your rituals on that spot then you can interact with these other worlds more easily and uh, you know the early uh, Christians um, were, um, were were people that understood um, this uh, were the, the people be uh, you know driving it did and churches were put on these pagan sites and um this is why, you know, so many uh, satanic uh, rituals go on in some of these churches because they're on these points. So this is what um, Halloween is really all about in the shadows to those that understand um, what it really is and how reality really works. Now let's come back, therefore, to the build-up militarily against Russia with the plan to instigate a third world war of mass death and destruction. And let's come back to the mentality necessary to contemplate that, let alone plan it. What kind of mentality do you need to sacrifice little kids on satanic altars and to do it on a mass scale? How totally and utterly deleted of empathy you would have to be to do that? How totally deleted of empathy and compassion you'd have to be to violently and sexually abuse a child? That is the mentality that's running our world. That is the mentality that has no problem with mass bombing Libya to save the civilians from violence, with instigating what happened in Libya, with instigating what happened in Syria and invading Iraq on a lie, with instigating what has unfolded in Afghanistan. These are the people with a mentality absolutely uh, perfectly described by the sacrifices of Halloween and Christmas and Beltane and all these other festivals of sacrifice. This is the mentality that has absolutely no problem whatsoever with mass death and destruction. In fact, it gets off on it. It's what it wants. So, when people say they would never do that, what they mean is this world that they inhabit, in their minds anyway, would never do that. This other world wants to do that, is doing that has been doing it for thousands of years and is continuing to do it today. And only by understanding this other world and the 
extreme psychopathic empathy deleted compassion deleted mentality that operates there can we really understand the events of this other world that the rest of us inhabit Halloween Christmas in their true sense to this network of Satanists and elite bloodlines are uh, times of extraordinary uh, suffering for their victims and there's a mass version of that and we call it war war is just to these people a massive satanic um, time of mass bloodletting and mass death and this um, mentality this satanic cult that runs the world is a death cult and you can understand so many things in the world of the scene when you understand this other world that drives the world of the scene this is a, <clears throat> a story from this week wiped out and it's all our fault <clears throat> excuse me humans have wiped out so many animals that the planet is on the verge of the first mass extinction since the age of the dinosaurs conservationists have warned by the end of the decade, seven out of every ten of the world's mammals, fish, amphibians, reptiles and birds will have been wiped out, according to the biggest ever report into extinction. Why would there not be mass death in a world run by a death cult? Not just death of wildlife, but death of the the environment death of the forests and the rainforests and of course death on a vast scale of human beings which has been happening uh, decade after decade all over the world most notably in the two world wars so far now they want a third and that is the mentality behind what is going on today and we need to get streetwise to that because if people go on naively saying oh that can't be true they'd never do that they will do that 